Hi, it's Malcolm from Aquaspray. If you saw the last video, we sell generators. So I did say at the end of the video that we cannot ship it with petrol in it. We can't ship it with oil in it. So you're going to have to put some oil in it before you use it. It will say this all on the labels and in the manuals. It's just whether people are going to read it. The first thing you want to do is open the box and get the generator out. Ah, <sighs> which is heavy. There are the full booklets for it, all about the Honda engine. And there's also a book for the alternator, all the electronics on there. Um, you shouldn't need anything to do with this, but it's handy to keep hold of. Uh, you have any problems, you come back to us, we'll sort it for you. Um, if you do everything that we'd say on the filling the oil up and checking bits and pieces like so, what's in this video, then you won't have any problems. They're pretty much bulletproof. Best engine on the market, best electrics to run the 7122. This is what we've found for you. This is the one you need. So just a quick one before we put any oil in it, once you've taken delivery and you've taken it out of the box, what you want to do is just check over every square inch of it. See if there's any dents, knocks, breaks, anything's cracked. Just look completely all the way over it, everywhere. It shouldn't be damaged, but if it is, we're more likely to be able to get something done without you putting oil and petrol in than uh, you putting oil and petrol in and then finding, like, say, this plastic cracked or something's wrong. So always just check the machine over. Any problems, contact us. If there's no problems, then we'll continue putting oil in it, and away we go. So yeah, the main operating manual here, this gives you everything you need to know, really. Um, not that a lot of people read this sort of stuff, but it'll tell you how to start it, what the service schedule is. Service schedule, it does say first month or 20 hours to change the oil. This is just to flush it out. Um, I would go down the route of I would be happy with you uh, servicing the machine the same as the Kranzel. So if you've got a, a brand new Kranzel, a brand new generator, you run it for 50 hours, then you change the oil. Remember the generator's probably gonna be running a little bit more than the pressure washer itself, but around 50 hours, it's not an exact science. There's no hour timer on it. Um, I know people that have run these engines to death and never ever even touch the oil. So, but I would, I would do this, this is for longevity. I would go 50 hours and then every 250 hours as a minimum on the engine. Um, you know, it does say when to change the uh, spark plugs and air filters and how to clean it and things like that and check and adjust stuff, but that's done on a service anyway. Every year, every 250 hours, I, I reckon these will be okay for it what oil to use, where to fill it to, filling points, how to clean stuff, how to check the electrodes, uh, the spark plugs, how to check the spark plugs, how to check the carburetor. This is all basic stuff really that they expect you to do yourself, but you know, like I say, this is what we're here for. There is troubleshooting in here. Uh, it is basic troubleshooting, so the engine's out of fuel, well, refuel it. Batteries discharged, no battery on this one. Fuses, you know, choke open. Basically, it's all in the manual. Um, but if you get stuck, you can always give us a ring and we'll talk you through anything you need to know. So just a quick overview. Uh, this is the main engine, carburetor. You shouldn't need to do anything. There is a spark plug here. It's under that cap. This is your oil filler with a dipstick. Now, to be fair, this is a bit of a pain to try and get oil in there, uh, but I will show the best way to do it in a sec. This is a drain plug for the engine oil um, on a service. Obviously, if you want to change oil, no problem. If you bring it to us, we will sort it. The electronics, the only thing you really need to know is that's a reset button, a circuit breaker, if you ever get stuck, uh, and a 16 amp commando plug goes in there. On the other side, commando plug, 
uh, a circuit breaker reset button in case that pops out. There is a oil filling hole here, a drain plug again, exactly the same on the other side, but this is not a dipstick. The dipstick's on the other side. The on off switch. So while it's running, all you have to do is switch it off if you need to. Pull cord and then all the carburetor settings, so the fuel on and choke. Under here is an air filter, just looking over the top, the exhaust that gets very hot, so don't touch that when it's running, and your spark plugs down there. Just normal unleaded petrol. Um, if you use a nice clean container, it will help your machine last longer. So once you've got the machine and you've inspected it fully for any damage you just need to put some oil in it first uh, you take the dipstick out make sure you give it a good wipe um, how to check the oil you would just place the dipstick up to the threads take it out and see where the oil is there's two little dots there that will tell you uh, as a rule of thumb where the threads are here and i'll show you a close-up in a moment it is at the bottom threads so just where about my fingernail is at the back end um, sometimes here can be a bit of a pain to try and fill unless you've got like a, a long funnel or something like that so it's very difficult to just try and tip anything in with the engine there so you can if you wish turn it round and you've got a very similar plug here take that plug out and you can fill it exactly the same. Both of them are exactly the same level on either side. You just fill it up to there. And then you can check with the dipstick on the other side just to make sure it's right. Then you put the caps back on. So this, this side is easier, obviously, to fill. So like I was saying before, the hardest part of this is actually filling it up. Um, so if you're worried about spilling it, make sure there's a rag or something to catch the oil. It does take 600 milliliters, which is almost a full Heinz ketchup bowl. This one's got the little valve in it, so I can tip it and fill it in that way. Um, but I always end up spilling it anyway. Let's change the camera angle. So what we do is we try and shoot it in there like that. Remember, it's going to take all the 600 mil. See how I dripped a little bit, so I might have to fill it up in a bit. We're running out of space. It's better if you have a funnel of some sorts. Oops. Oh, bloody hell. It's hard doing it with the angle of where the camera is. I don't want to be covering it. So just let the engine oil settle down a little bit. I think we are about right. We'll just check in here. I'll zoom in quickly. If I can do it without knocking the camera too much. It's probably just a little bit over. See how the oil is to the top threads. So I'm just going to take a little bit out. So yeah, if you do spill any oil, make sure you mop all that up because it can get really, really messy. Check the oil. Just wipe the dipstick, put it in, 
make sure it's between them two little dots and screw this back in there is a torque setting no doubt for that but just make sure there's no oil on the engine because once it gets hot it'll start to smoke little oil bits on it and apart from that all we need to do is put some fuel in it so now the oil's filled we don't need this ticket anymore because this is just to remind you that it needs oil so just get rid of that so behind here um I don't know if you can see it on the camera there's a little yellow wire on there that's an oil level sensor so if your oil does drop that oil level sensor will cut the machine out and you're not be able to use it so if it stops for whatever reason first thing you want to do is check the fuel the next one is check the oil make sure they've both got oil and fuel in so the first time that you run this machine uh, there will be no fuel in the carburetor so while i've sent somebody out to get some fuel uh, I'll just explain a little bit of these. So you have the choke, which is the gray one, and there's an arrow. So if you point it towards the arrow, the choke is on and the choke is off. And the same with the fuel. So the bottom, it'll say on going that way. So you turn that to the fuel and that will then start letting the fuel run to the carburetor. When you're starting it from a cold start, you want obviously the fuel on and you want to put the choke on. Make sure the machine is switched on at the switch at the side, and then you'll be able to just pull it, and it should start very, very easily. Now, it will sound a little bit chuggy while that choke's on, but you just need it to run it for a couple of minutes, and then slowly just turn this choke off until you get the full revs on it. Once the engine's warm, you can just turn it on, pull the engine with the fuel on, and it will just run uh, nice and easy. One pull, vroom, and it'll start. At the end of the day, or if you're not going to be using this generator again that day, make sure the switch is off and you turn the fuel off. That will stop any fuel that is a potential leak from leaking anywhere. It will stay in the fuel tank and not do anything. So choke off, fuel off. And then in the morning when it's a cold start again, you pretty much swap these round. Pull start and then turn the choke off and have that running so if you're going to get 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 a good quality fuel can with a spout so you don't spill any if you do spill any fuel make sure that you completely clean it up and make sure it's completely dry before you start it because you don't want to catch uh, make it catch fire if it touches anything hot so make sure it's cool when you're refueling it uh, make sure the cap is fully closed as well make sure everything's clean and then you'll be able to start it. So when you come to start it first thing in the morning, first thing you want to do is switch the machine on. Then coming to the back end, the first thing you want to do is turn your fuel on. If the machine is uh, cold and it's on a cold start, you want to turn the choke on. And then all you have to do is pull this handle. But it might get a little bit noisy. This has never been run before, so it might just need a couple of pulls just to get the fuel into the carburetor properly. And then... If you look how, how smoky it is in a minute, that's because the choke's on. Then... Once it settles down, then you can plug things in and start working. To turn the machine off, all you need to do is switch it off. So all you have to do is switch that switch off. Uh, if you're not going to be using the machine again, just turn the fuel off. That's the safest thing to do. So once, once the machine's warm, uh, you shouldn't need the choke again. Um, if it doesn't start first time, then use the choke. So, see how it didn't start? Bit of choke on. So once all the machine's been run for a while, um, everything's nice and warm, you should just be able to flick it on and then start the engine. 
without any problems. And there should be no smoke, no nothing. And if you're not going to be using it for the end of the rest of the day, just turn the fuel off. Yeah, so what once it's been run for a while and everything's sort of starting to get warm, you won't need that choke. You just switch the machine on and give it a pull. She's gonna make me out to be a liar. <laughs> 